Amanda, I can tell you that it's very cold, it's very snowy, and it's very windy. The snow has really started to pick up in the last half hour. But what I can tell you is that I-70 behind me, which had been closed for a good chunk of the morning westbound, is now back open. Earlier today, the only thing you could call it plain and simple was a parking lot. People weren't going anywhere. Things got downright nasty this morning, prompting State Patrol to shut down westbound completely. Then around 10, it reopened to everyone, although chain laws remain in effect for commercial vehicles. Some put theirs on better than others. The morning problem arose when some State Patrol simply, they simply got overwhelmed. Too many accidents, too many people off the road. We had upwards of almost 20 semis sitting on I-70 that was blocking it. And uh, we had every available big wrecker up here. And even the big wreckers were having a hard time pulling the trucks off the road. And as members of State Patrol are very quick to point out, as the snow continues to fall, there are no guarantees that I-70 up west of Denver is going to remain open. In fact, talked to a lot of them earlier today, and they said, quite simply, if you don't have to go west out of Denver, it's just not a good idea. A lot of people getting stuck, and a lot of people that we talked today simply regretted the fact that they came out west. Let's turn, let's shift a little bit over to the airport, over to DIA, where Adam Schrager is standing by. Adam, what can you tell us? Well, Chris, I'm not a meteorologist. Don't play one on TV. The foothills are getting some of the deepest snow, and it will keep piling up through tomorrow. Nine News reporter Chris Vanderveen joining us from Genesee this evening. And Chris, a few moments ago we talked with Matt Renew. He's on the western edge of that I-70 shutdown. You're there in Genesee. We know it's closed westbound from Morrison, so you're probably not seeing much interstate traffic at this point. Not very much at all, and there's a very good reason for that. If you're wondering why the interstate happens to be closed between those two areas, there's a very good reason. We have seen just an incredible amount of snow throughout the day as it continues through this hour. We're sort of in this little trench right here to give you a better idea of how much snow we're talking about. This morning, uh, they uh, ex excuse me, late last night, they say they had about a foot of snow, and then as the day went on, as the, as the night went along, by this morning, they say they had two feet, and then late this afternoon, we're talking about upwards of three feet, four feet in some areas, and the drifts are upwards of five to six feet. We're seeing snowfall rates of around three to four inches an hour, make, making travel extremely difficult. The one piece of good news around here is that the wind really hasn't kicked up all that much. Uh, the past three or four hours, we've seen little bursts where it will kick up for maybe about five or ten minutes and then it will die down. The one thing that hasn't been dying down certainly is this snow. We expect it, con it to continue throughout the night. As Matt said, they don't expect I-70 to be opened anytime soon, and this snow is the big reason why. Jim? Chris, we see that trench. You talked to a lot of people who shovel their front walk. An hour later, there's another four or five inches on it, they claim. It's really coming down. And that's the difficult part about all of this. As soon as they shovel it up, it fills right back in. We've been telling you about the big traffic problem in the mountains. Interstate 70 closed from Morrison all the way up to Silverthorne. Nine News reporter Chris Vanderveen is located in Genesee. He has been there all day. And Chris, I know it's been quite the saga as you try to see if some of those big rigs can get dug out to get that highway open. Jim, and what we're hearing tonight is really a plea for help from the state. We heard a similar plea last night from CDOT. We're hearing it again tonight to get those wreckers up here to try to get those semis out because, quite frankly, until they get the wreckers up here and the semis out, this road is going to remain closed, and that is certainly not good news. A bit of good news in the past few hours in this particular area, we've seen some of the state's big guns hauling away snow and clearing a path for some of the semis. In this particular location, truckers had been stuck since noon yesterday. A long wait. The tired truckers hope will soon come to an end because right now there are simply a lot of questions. We haven't been told, heard nothing. I mean, other than what I've heard on the AM radio, uh, as far as the wreckers to get us out of here, they told us, you know, that they were shut down for the day. And while in this area we have seen the semis get out of this particular area, we're told just about a mile or two down the road, there are another eight to ten semis waiting for those wreckers to come haul them out. And quite frankly, if they don't get out, this, uh, this interstate will not open up anytime soon. The hope is it's going to be open up by tomorrow morning. But right now, that may be a little bit optimistic. Jim, back to you. Chris, I suspect those truckers feel responsible for hanging around with their rigs, so they really can't find any lodging, so to speak. 
they really can't. A lot of them have uh, ventured forth into surrounding areas looking for food, but we just talked to somebody uh, and gave a little bit of food to somebody that hadn't eaten the in the past day and a half, he, frantically looking for areas around here because there just aren't a whole lot of services that are open right now. All right, Chris Vanderveen, thanks for the update from Genesee. Denver's Office of Emergency Preparedness opened up this afternoon. As we have seen, the driving conditions are just brutal in many parts of the state, but the mountains are getting the worst of it. Interstate 70 remains closed in both directions from Morrison west to Silverthorne. Nine News reporter Chris Vanderveen is at the El Rancho exit. Chris, the foothills have seen some monster snow totals so far. And believe it or not, just within the last hour, we've actually seen the snow increase in intensity. We've got three feet seems to be the minimum around here and three to four inches an hour is certainly not unheard of. If you're stuck in it, it really is not any fun as a lot of people continue to be stuck in it. But for a lot of people in this area, they're actually pleased to see the snow right now. Just however, they're wondering, when is this all going to end? Look at that. It just keeps snowing. That's just crazy. And snowing. At least three, four inches an hour. And snowing. A lot of snow. It's why Aaron Waxweiler and friends. We're on our way to Keystone. Are inside eating pizza and not outside on those roads. Terrible. Not good. Just dry in general, and we need the moisture badly. It's a point not lost on the guy who runs this place. Everybody seems kind of worn out because they've usually already been stuck in a ditch. Some people improvise, this guy's running errands, while others agonize, it's hard to catch up. I wasn't anticipating this much snow. And others even sympathize. Jefferson County Sheriff's deputies make, get this, house calls for those who can't get out and get much needed medicine. I'm just gonna hand this to you. It's just really deep. But as Chad Richards knows <laughs> all too well, last night there was a foot, this morning, two feet. And by the time he did this, three feet. And there's no telling what tomorrow might bring. Five feet, six feet, maybe? Let's hope not a lot of people around here hoping we don't see five or six feet of snow. The traffic jam you see behind me is simply a result of too many semis and not enough tow trucks to get them all out. State Patrol has actually spent the past two hours pleading with tow truck companies around the state to get them to this area to try to help get those semis out. Regardless, uh, there are hot, literally hundreds of drivers that remain stuck on this section of I-70 waiting to get out, maybe moving two, three, four miles an hour. So again, if you're waiting for people to get back from this area in Denver, it is going to take some time. I-70 again remains closed and it will likely stay closed until tomorrow morning. Jim. Chris, you've been out in this all day and night. Do you have an escape route to get out of there? I don't know. I actually think because I-70 is closed, we're actually stuck too. So we'll have to call it a night, I guess. All right. Great job today, Chris. Thanks very much. Well, impossible to travel by air out of Denver, also very difficult on the roadways. Nine News reporter Chris Vanderveen is once again up in the foothills in the uh, foothills town of Genesee. And Chris, uh, you've seen a lot of snow over the past 48 hours. We certainly have seen a lot of snow, and it's very discouraging news for people that want to go up to the high country to take advantage of some of that fresh powder that's fallen in the ski areas. I-70 behind me is closed at this hour. CDOT tells us it will likely remain closed tonight and possibly through until tomorrow morning. Not good news for people wanting to go through. And if you're looking for a reason why this may be taking so long, you have to look no further than what's going on right behind me. We have numerous semis that are struggling to make it up this incline. This is where we were if you're watching our newscast at 10 o'clock last night. This was the root cause for that major traffic jam that was going on at 10 o'clock last night that continued for many hours. Semis simply unable to make it up this incline and they have remained here for the past 24 hours, simply unable to move. CDOT has brought a few tractors out here. They are trying to plow out part of the road and also get some of these semis out of here. But there are a number of semis just on this small incline and they sort of dot the landscape as you go throughout uh, I-70 west of Denver. They're simply unable to make it because there's simply just too much snow and it's just too slick for them to get through right now. Also want to give you an update on what's going on at Evergreen right now because it is a fairly situation, very serious situation that's taking place right now. Currently we're told by XL Energy that they have about 5,000 people without power and that includes, interestingly enough, the water pumping station. So, uh, oddly enough, with all of this water around us right now, with all of this snow, they're actually asking people in, in the Evergreen 
riparian area to conserve their water because of the problems with the water pumping station. And also, Quest in the last hour has done their reverse 911 around here, telling people that their phone service could be knocked out fairly soon if it hasn't already. So certainly, this incredible amount of snow is certainly taking its toll in the mountain areas. We've seen about four and a half feet of snow. The snow continues at this hour, but it is uh, generally fairly light snow, certainly not the heavy stuff that we saw just about 12 hours ago. It is lightening up, still snowing at this hour. The bad news, if you're trying to get up I-70 now, right now, it's not going to happen. And if you're trying to get down off I-70, it's not going to happen. It's still closed. Jim? Chris, we've got about 30 seconds with you. Tell us what happened to all those motorists who were really stranded out on the highway last night. Did they find hotels, motels along the way? How'd they do? Jim, really a mixed bag. A lot of people we talked to actually spent their night, spent the night in their cars, and a lot of people. Uh, there's a hotel not too far from here. They they managed to walk up there, but that hotel is seriously overbooked right now. A lot of people just jamming five, six, seven people into a room right now. Oh boy, Chris Vanderveen, thanks very much, Chris. Well, I-70 west of Denver is completely shut down at this hour. Nine News reporter Chris Vanderveen and crew have been stuck in Genesee since yesterday. He's going to join us again now. Chris, it's just incredible the amount of snow up there. An unbelievable amount of snow that we're talking about, Kathy, about five feet of snow. And just in the last half hour to half an hour, we've learned of some almost scary situations that are developing on the, along the I-70 corridor. We've heard a lot of stories of, act, of people actually stuck in their cars that have been in their cars or vans for about the past 24 hours, only, be, only to be found by passerbys this morning. We just found one of those cases about a half an hour ago. An EMT staying here at the hotel came upon a mother and her very young boy who had been stuck in their van since noon yesterday. They were on their way to Grand Junction when this, when this storm simply overwhelmed them. We're hearing, unfortunately, a lot of similar stories to this one, leaving many to openly worry that there may be still a number of stranded motorists. In this case, the good news is that they got out okay. First parts of the emergency situation are your ABCs, airway, breathing, circulation. And if they got them, they have a, an open throat. If uh, their heart's pumping and uh, all that good stuff, then they're all right. So just got to check their fluid levels. That's a big thing when it gets cold and uh, people are working like this, trying to run outside, people really get volume depleted, meaning they're, they're dehydrated. So they got to get fluids. A couple people passed out and were brought here by the paramedics because of that. So just got to check their fluids, make sure that they have enough water. We're stuck down here at the little convenience store. Can't even get out of the driveway at all. What time did you get stuck? Um, I've been there since noon yesterday. Were you work down there? Mm -mm. Um, oh, is that just what they gave you? Yeah, she let me borrow it because I had no coats, no blankets, nothing. I was on my way back from Texas. Did not know this was coming and all, but we're stranded. A lot of people stranded at this hour. We are in the El Rancho parking lot, if you're familiar with the area. It's very close to I-70, and for the past hour to two hours, we've seen a lot of snowmobilers come up this way, actually amateur snowmobilers that have come from the Evergreen area, that have come up, sort of assembled here. We're actually right next to a Quality Suites motel. They've assembled in this area. They've gone off in search of more stranded motorists. They've been coming back periodically with stranded motorists. The good news is that everyone's been doing okay. Everyone seems to be in good spirits for the fact they've been, they've been spending the past 24 hours in their car. They're now in warm conditions. That's the good news. The bad news is that the snow is continuing at this hour. Again, we said we have about four and a half to five feet of snow very deep around here. And if you are stuck in it, you're probably not getting out. Kathy? Chris, thank you so much. You really feel for those people that are stuck mm -hmm. off the side of the roadway, especially the moms sure do. and their little ones. Thank you for that information. Welcome back to our extended coverage of the blizzard of 2003. Nine News reporter Chris Vanderveen is on I-70 west of Genesee. He spent the night there, was kind of stuck there. He's been with some hardy neighbors and others oh, that are he's been in the morning digging out. Uh, are you standing up, Chris? Uh, no, fortunately not, but this okay. is actually what it's like to sit. <laughs> In four and a half feet of snow, I'm actually, the feet's not coming close to touching the ground. The snow continues to fall. On a serious note, in the last half an hour, we've been talking to some snowmobilers in the area. 
and they've actually been going throughout the area and sort of repeated that what that phone call that you, I believe you guys got from Weld County saying that he's actually going to people that have been stuck on I-70 or various parts around I-70 that have been unable to get out. He actually rescued somebody out of his car that had been stuck there for about 14 hours overnight. So if you can imagine being stuck in this in your car for 14 hours, certainly not a very fun situation. But for a lot of people, they aren't in their cars. They've actually made it over here to where we are, where we got stuck last night, a hotel in the area that is certainly very booked. And right next to me, stuck, stranded in the snow, we've got actually a couple of corn huskers. Don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing in Colorado, but I want to ask you guys, uh, what the heck are you guys doing here? Uh, we were skiing over at Copper Mountain for a couple of days, and we tried driving back to Wheat Ridge, and we're actually 20 miles away from the house we're supposed to go to, but we couldn't make it last night. We stopped here about 6 o'clock, and my car is parked about a mile away, and we had to walk over here. Tell, tell me about the conditions that you guys encountered last night. I know last night it was incredibly treacherous. Uh, it took us about three, three, mile, or three miles, three hours to make it up one hill. It was just booked and everything. We, my front wheel drive couldn't make it up, and it was, just, it was terrible. So you say your car is about a mile from here. Is it stuck? Is it okay? I, we've seen people digging their cars out. If you parked at six o'clock last night, yeah. it's probably going to be buried. Have you seen it? Yeah, we just we walked down there to get some food for tonight, and there's probably about two feet of snow piled on the top of it, and we had to bury it out just so we can open the door and the trunk. So uh, you guys are on spring break right now, right? Yeah. What's what's. <laughs> What's what's the plan for uh, the the rest of the spring break? I guess it's fun in some ways, but then it's not so fun in others. Well, we're just gonna try to make it back into the city until my car can get out, so we can drive back to Nebraska. <laughs> it seems like the plan for the day, though, and talking to a lot of people around here, no one's even if I-70 does happen to to open back up again, it doesn't seem like anyone's real anxious to get back out on the roads again. And in fact, a lot of people are probably going to stay put. Is that the plan for you guys as well? Yeah, we're just going to stay put until maybe the snow will let up a little bit, and maybe the roads can clear off, so the state maybe the state can get out there and just give us. Enough, enough room to get back home. Uh, what do you expect to encounter on your way back in Nebraska? They got 70 degree weather in Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I mean, are you guys skiers or what? Yeah, we're skiers. It was great powder when we were skiing on Monday, but uh, after seeing this, I just kind of want to go back to shorts and a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Very well said at this moment. Thanks a lot, guys. Certainly uh, an incredible amount of snow that we're seeing up here, upwards of four and a half to five feet. It is certainly causing a lot of problems in the Evergreen area, a lot of power outages in the area. Talk to somebody from XL that their truck actually got stuck and they couldn't actually make it out. So certainly we're hoping that the snow is going to come to an end, but right now, at least for the time being, it certainly does not. Back to you guys in the studio. Mm -hmm. Chris from the snow beach near Genesee. All right, thanks. Here it is. It's the best, warmest place in the world to be. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Three guys talking, sitting, hanging out in a snowbank. Yeah. Would we do that? No. No. <laughs> Somewhere warm by a fire. Mm -hmm. Chris, right, Chris, are you are you out there? Chris, are we you? We are certainly out here. We're seeing it. Can you hear me? I, yeah, I can, I can hear you. We amount. see you. It's an unbelievable amount of snow. It's just caused us some technical problems throughout the night, as you can imagine. But we are back up. We are con continuing to see the snow come down at a fairly heavy clip. If you're familiar with the area, we're fairly close to I-70, actually in the parking lot of El Rancho. We're actually stuck here with a lot of people that are stuck here right now. Uh, I'm going to talk to Fawn Chang. She's from Breckenridge. She actually is joining the rest of us that's stuck here. Uh, tell me your story about what happened yesterday. Oh, we were just driving, trying to catch a plane in Denver at 4 o'clock. We left early knowing that we'd get the snow, and we got stuck a few times. A few tractor trailers were jackknifed, and we saw the sign that said Quality Suites. I called and got a room, just decided to wait it out. It's really an unbelievable amount of snow up here. How much are we talking about? Any idea? It's incredible. It looks like 12 feet. No, actually, I would say it's probably close to 6 or 8 feet. I don't know if the camera can see the kids behind us that are playing with the, with the snowballs, but you said your, your kids are a little bit disappointed. They wanted to get out of here. They were scheduled to be in Palm Island, Florida this morning at 11 o'clock, so they're a little bit upset. A little bit of a cruel twist right now, I guess. <laughs> right. So, so what's the plan for the rest of the day? We're just going to swim, play, eat oatmeal and junk food, and <laughs> there's no food around, nothing's open. And uh, hopefully, we, if we can get out, we can. If not, we'll 
uh, leave tomorrow morning. You, you spent the better part of the morning just trying to get your car out of all the snow. If we can take a look at your car behind me, this was buried, completely buried in snow, wasn't it? I mean, how much snow are we talking about? Oh, it looks like it's about three or four feet. How long have you been working on this for now? I don't know. I wasn't paying attention or else I'd be tired. <laughs> So what, what, the, the mood around here, let me just move my way around here. I'm, I'm just sort of dancing around you. I apologize for that. What's the mood around here? It seems like people are in a relatively good mood considering that we have about five feet of snow around us. It does. Everybody seems to be okay with it. They understand there's nothing that can be done. Nobody's upset. I was just concerned about a gentleman with two little kids that was turned away because he they didn't have any rooms, people in the lobby, but everybody's pretty up and, and okay with it. Yeah, we noticed a lot of people actually spending the night in the lobby, in the chairs, with blankets over them. Did you actually get a room last night, and how was it? Yes, it was It was wonderful. I almost felt guilty I wanted to have them come and share the room with us, because it's a nice suite. <laughs> Are you still going to be able to get a room tonight? Yes, yes. Um, the roads, we just heard earlier about the roads in Evergreen. I don't imagine you've been able to get out, but it doesn't seem like the roads are in good shape whatsoever. It doesn't. It really doesn't. It looks a mess. We'll, we'll put your uh, weather skills to test. Uh, when do you think this is going to end? I think about 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. <laughs> Let's hope it's a little sooner than that, because then by then we may have about 8 feet of snow. Thank you very much, Fun. I appreciate it, and good luck trying to get out of here. Just, uh, just you guys, just an incredible amount of snow. It's been snowing like this throughout the night. Last night we were talking about three inches an hour. That's probably what it's doing right now. When we came in last night, we probably had about a little bit over three feet. Now the people at the front desk at the hotel where a lot of people are stranded say it's about four feet, six inches, close to five feet. Many areas around the Evergreen area wouldn't be surprised to see six feet. And if the snow continues like it is, it's just going to keep on piling up. We're not exactly sure when this is going to end, but we certainly haven't seen any let up in sight. A lot of people stuck behind me. Pretty much no one's going anywhere at this hour. We even, in fact, talked to somebody from XL. XL's actually got a truck up that way that's actually stuck. He was saying he was going to try to work on the problems in Evergreen to see just what type of problems they were dealing with up in Evergreen, but he can't get his truck out to check on the folks up there for so certainly an unbelievably snowy situation and we'll keep you updated as this morning goes along. Back to you guys. Chris, you may as well just give in and have fun with those kids behind you because one of them was about to nail you with a snowball. <laughs> We're watching. It's coming. Yeah. It's coming any second. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Thanks. you so much for that report. We'll talk with you again later. Sure. Oats. Nine News reporter Chris Vanderveen and photojournalist Lou Davis have been stuck near Evergreen since Tuesday. Chris, how are you and Lou holding up? Well, we now know what they're talking about when they ask you to keep a numerous amounts of supplies in your car because we yes. have been running out. The socks are wet, the shoes are wet, but for people around here, this really has been a fairly ser serious situation. On Tuesday, I can tell you, it was fairly novel. We were getting all this snow. We had a lot of snow. People around here have been praying for this, and they were actually glad that we got it. Then yesterday, you could tell a bit of a shift. People were starting to get a little bit more annoyed, and now today, People simply just want to get going, knowing full well that I-70 remains closed at this hour. So in order to help make that happen, at least in part, today we've seen a Herculean effort to get everyone's cars dug out. No small task, mind you. We have about four and a half to five feet of snow up here. This morning, people from Texas, Kansas, Nebraska woke up early and got out the shovels just to dig out a path to try to get out of here. There's a long pathway in upper park, parking lot where they have been unable to get out of the past few days. A lot of them are actually students stranded on their spring break and now they just want to get home. Just want to get out there. Everyone's getting a little cabin fever, getting a little delirious, running out of food and now we're just trying to get out of here before, before it's too late, you know, before it starts snowing again. In the nearby hotel, we've seen people uh, stacking up into rooms, three, four, five, six, maybe even more people to every individual room. We did have the Red Cross stop by here last night to drop off some food for some people that was much appreciated because, as you can imagine, when you have four and a half feet to five feet of snow, you simply just start to, stop to, start to run out of food. That is the parking area behind me. You can actually, the good news is, is that you can actually see the cars because not too long ago, a lot of those cars were just white lumps that you were unable to see. And quite frankly, it was a very frustrating experience for a lot of people because they couldn't see their car. It was just 
uh, completely buried in snow. Now you can see the tops of the cars. Now you can see that people are having a little bit more success. I would say you know, that dig out that we've uh, watched all morning long, they probably have about four or five more cars to go and then they will be anxious to be on their way. Unfortunately, the bad news is everyone's been asking us for about the past few hours, when is I-70 going to open back up again so they, they can get back into Denver? And unfortunately, we don't have a very good answer for them for right now because right now we don't know either as well. We're just waiting for that avalanche control to be done and also for the rest of the trucks and the semis to get taken off the road as well. Back to you guys. Okay, Chris Amazing Vanderveen pictures. near you, Evergreen Chris. this uh, morning for we'll this get, afternoon uh, already. Hopefully we'll get him and Lou home soon. Yes. <laughs> hey, we're out of clothes. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back uh, with lots more on our Blizzard coverage of 2003, uh, including uh, we're going to take a look, I think, uh, at some pictures of Sky 9. We'll be back in just a